here is the kitchen light I installed a few days ago. I set it up with three 60 watt equivalent, I believe they're 13 watt CFLs and it's too bright. When you walk in the kitchen here it's just overbearing. You can see in relation to the hanging light it's totally overexposed on the camera. It's just too bright. It's nice for cooking or for making a list or something like that but it's too bright for general illumination, eating dinner in the evening, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace those 60 watt CFLs with 100 watt incandescent bulbs and I'm going to connect a dimmer control. Now yes this says DEL on it I realize that but it also says incandescent halogen which is what we're interested in. And that is some crazy filament on that halogen incandescent bulb. So we'll set this up We'll put it there, so then we'll have two dimmer switches there, which is fine. And so we'll be able to tone it down when we don't need the additional light. But then I'll still be able to turn it back up when I need the additional light. Because having this extra light is nice because now, you see the kitchen was always a little bit dark over here and and whatnot. But now this, this fills in the extra light and it's nice. And this would allow me to not have to have lights on these fans if I decided to do a setup without fans with lights. So I want to keep the versatility in place and I'm going to do that with the incandescent bulbs and the dimmer control. So first I need to figure out again what circuit this is on. Switch it off and then we'll take apart this box here and change out the switch. Okay, let's take this off now. And we gotta pay careful attention to not lose track of the way the colors are set up. Because I don't know if the colors are accurate to what they should be. Because I didn't modify this. So this is just however it was. Which knowing this place is probably incorrect. I believe, yeah, these lights still have power, so we do have um, power in the box still. Okay, this is going to be tight because we're going to have two fairly large dimmer controls right next to each other. Now this one in the middle, this is a, I believe it's either an 800 or a 1000 watts of dimmer. And that control we cannot take any of the tabs off because of... Um, because of the load that's on there is close to the peak. I think it's got 800 watts. Is it, it must be a thousand watt dimmer then. I think it's got 800 watts on there. Now this one we're going to have to see what we can do. We might have to take the tabs off on this one in order to make it fit. Or if it really comes down to it, we can put it on the other. Um, we can put it in the other box, but I really don't want to do that because then. I have to replace both of the switches so that it matches. Okay. So that is a new piece of wire. I think my uncle put this in, so this should be correct. Let's take a look at this new control that we have. Hopefully this is small. Oh boy, it does not look small at all. Now this is rated for 600 
the watts. Now we don't need 600 the watts. We would only at most need 300 the watts. Because I'm never going to put more than 100 watts of light into this fixture. Okay, so that looks like it should open, but it doesn't. That's kind of unintuitive. I don't like unintuitive, I like intuitive. Okay. So the control is pretty big and I think that it is definitely not going to fit into the box. So this is going to start posing a problem. Yeah, it don't even fit uh, like that much. Oh man. Hmm. It needs, let's see if I can jam this in there. Now we might have to start thinking about heat dissipation, so this might not even work. Not worried about this heating up, I'm worried about this one heating up. If I move this over all the way, I just move the whole thing, move both of these switches over. Let's see if I can make it work that way. Okay, now it's not going to work because it's going to short out on the, um, well actually no, if we screw this in it's not going to short out. Duh. Yeah, that would keep it flush. So then, I mean that technically fits, but I don't like it at all. This is getting very flaky. Hmm. Not good. Let's see if the instruction mentions anything about removing the tabs. I would definitely feel better if we could take off the tabs at least on the right side. Okay, so two sides removed is 400 watts. One side removed is 500 watts. And those sides removed is 600 watts. So, in our case here, I'm never going to put more than 100 watt bulbs in a fixture. So we'll be drawing at most 300 watts. And technically we're using halogen, so it's only 72 times 3, which is only around... Uh, 230 watts somewhere around there uh, so we'll be fine if we take off both tabs so we're gonna take off all the sides which I guess these just operate like little heat sinks I can't imagine they draw that much heat off but According to this, it does. Okay, what kind of DEL nonsense is this? Plus or minus? Oh boy, it turns. I don't know what that does. Alright, so now with that removed, let's see if it fits any better. It's still going to be very, very tight, but I think so that we'll be able to get it. This is really, really pushing the boundaries of what what is allowed to exist here. 
really pushing the boundaries. And for all purposes, it's in there and it works. And we're not taking any tabs off that. The only concern now is we've got to get this switch to move over enough such that um, I can still fit the whatever this thing is called on there. Because I think right now it's going to be out of alignment because I moved it. Yeah, see that? So if I can't move this switch over anymore, then we're, we got problems. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to cut this down and drill this hole out a little more to move it over because it needs to move over more. It's not moved over enough. This switch is for the um, for an outdoor light that I don't use. So I could just cancel it out, but I don't want to delete a circuit right now. All right, oh man. Hmm. I wonder if that's off now. No, it's still got power. All right, I gotta figure out what circuit that's on. See if I can shrink down the switch. Okay, let's see if there's any power in the box. Does not seem to be. Those are all just false static uh, discharge readings. Okay, so let's remove this switch. be able to move it over. This might be easier than I anticipated. That would be a nice change in pace. Oh, not good. The top just broke. That's okay. I don't think it'll matter in our application here. Okay, that will move over now all the way. Hopefully that works. when things make excessive vibrating noises. I 
Actually, you know what might do this? Ten snips. Beautiful. And this is why I keep so many tools around because even if you use them once a decade, they're worth the storage space. So using the right tool didn't even break the thing. All right. So now that will move over all the way. So let's see if if I put these the screws that I've lost back on. Let's see now if I can get the switch cover to fit. So that's all the way over. all the way over. If that doesn't work, then uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Wow. Whew. Talk about a tight fit. It fits, but just barely. Wow. This is kind of bent though. Um, I think if we take a little bit more off, it won't be bent. The bentness will bother me. So what we actually need to do is kind of go in like this. And then you kind of snip like this. What point do we call this entering in the realm of hackery? We're just about where we need to be to fix the lack of levelness. That will, will that be straight now? I think it will be. Let's check it. So 
Something weird is going on here because we got two. Oh no, no, no. Just cancel, cancel. Everything's copacetic. This appears to be an old work box. That's kind of weird. At this point, I'm forgetting what things were changed and what things were left alone when we moved in. This looks like it was not moved, but I don't know. I don't remember. As long as it works, that's all I care. went crooked again. Is it the bottom part? It is. There we go, now it's pretty straight. That switch sure took a beating. Jeez. I thought this was gonna be simple. <laughs> All right, that looks good now. this fits we're good to proceed it does it fits perfectly all right we're ready to proceed okay yeah my uncle definitely set this switch up because he likes to put the tape around the switches This wants to be grounded, so we're going to have to pull this off and grab the bottom that's in there. You know what? I just realized these are pretty much the same controls in a different flavor. This is a Luteron as well. And the wiring schema, uh, at least with the ground, is pretty much the same.
That does not need to be so tight. What the heck? I always like to start with a new piece. I don't like to reuse bent wire. So this switch is still perfectly good. We could use this for something else. I'll put this into the electrical in front of the project. Actually, you know where I might put this? I might put this at the top of the stairs because the switch at the top of the stairs is kind of loose and flaky. I'm going to replace it with that one because that one is still good. goes like this. So this one needs to hook this way. And yes, it does matter. And these two need to hook this way. So the switch will sit like this because it says up.
Okay. All the wires are connected. They were connected slowly and accurately. It's going to get a little bit tight here trying to close this up because we've got a lot of stuff going on in this box. this and make sure that there's no heat dissipation issues. There shouldn't be because it's this install is, is pictured on the box so this is not illegal but it's definitely not my favorite. Now you know what's happening right now is the wires are getting caught on the the uh, the box supports, which is not really a problem once you put it in. It's not going to happen. Does that brown wire go to? That's weird. You know what that might be? That might be the underground feed that goes to the the um, driveway street light. But I can't trace that to anywhere yet. I wonder if it goes to here. That could be. That's not where I want it to go, but that could be. Only potential problem I see, which I guess uh, I guess that won't be an issue. The 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 box supports are getting close to those screws. They're getting close to the common contact. There's nothing I can do about that. It does go in all the way. It's extremely tight, but it's there. We'll just have to observe it. I think it'll be fine, but the temperature of the, the switch box will, will give us all the answers.
stupid. Well, that's definitely one of the tightest switch installs I've ever done. But as far as I'm concerned, it's copacetic. Now let's see if the infamous switch to cover fits. Okay, it does not fit. It needs to move over. But I don't think so that we can do that. It needs to move over a lot. We really don't have that kind of space. Are you serious? After all that, we're going to have another stop. I mean, that's that's not slightly off. That's an eighth of an inch plus off. The only way to do that is going to be if this overlaps this. Which I don't I don't know if that's allowed. I don't know what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm at a complete standstill right now. I don't think that we can do this. Cause this can't the only way for this to move over would be for this to sit on top of it, which is sketchy. This is the only way this is going to work. I'm not sure that this is supposed to be like this. Shouldn't, I don't think it's an electrical issue, it's a heat issue. This is going to dissipate the heat properly like that. I don't know. I might have to do some research and see if this is acceptable. I might be able to fudge it. I'm just not sure that that's allowed. Okay, so it fits right now. The cover will go on and everything is fine. Is that allowed? Can you overlap the switch like that? I don't see any reason why electrically you can't do that. There's no contacts here. It's not going to short out to anything. Oh. I think at this point, the best way to tell is to turn it on full power and see if anything heats up. It always heats up, but let's see if it heats up more than normal. I, I'm starting to think this might be okay. It's definitely dodgy, but I think it might be okay. And if anything, it's just going to transfer the heat into the other switch. That's, I think, the worst case scenario, which 
And even then, is that really a big deal? I don't know. We have a little control there, which we can still move. I don't know what that does. Uh, uh, well, we're going to go with that for now. If I, for some reason, find out that this does not work, or it's not allowed, then uh, I will have to revisit it. I think it's probably going to be okay. I just don't see any reason why... I, I don't think it would be a problem. We gotta be coming up on what an hour on this this project so far. Jeez, I said to myself before, oh, it's just changing out a switch. It'll only take ten minutes. What was I thinking? The cover is not sitting hundred percent flat against the wall. Because that switch is bulged out of hair, but if that's the worst thing that's going to have to go on to make this work, I'll live with it. Is this busted up or what here? There it goes. That is somewhat annoying, but I'll live with it. Okay, I'm gonna go turn it on. And let's see what happens. Hopefully nothing will happen. Okay, the power's on, the light's on. It's operating from the other switch. That's working. That's working. All right, well, it's all working. So now we just gotta turn everything on and let it operate and see if anything heats up. So now we'll change the bulbs out in the fixture and then we'll be done. I got a brand new pack of incandescent bulbs out just for this because I don't want to be changing this anytime soon again. Which is why I opted for CFLs in the first place. But they did not work out.
Okay, let's make sure that's working. It appears to be working. Goes all the way down, all the way back up, and everywhere in between. It's not quite instant on though. I wonder if this control is, is electronic in some way. Because it's for OED. As opposed to just being a basic conventional rheostat or whatever the device is that does that. That does dimming on incandescent level. Getting this back up here is super flaky. That's why I didn't want to be changing this regularly. I mean, you can test some bulbs will last a little while, especially because they're going to be dimmed most of the time, anyways. Okay, so there is a full brightness. And then we can tone it down. Although it is kind of loud, that might be a problem. Well, we'll deal with that later. I hate to say it, but maybe I'll have to look into DEL bulbs. I could not find a three-way dimmer for incandescent. I don't know. I'll live with it for now. Um, that's a good brightness. Could always just put 40 watt or 25 watt bulbs in there too, but we'll live with it like this for now and see how annoying that, that uh, sound becomes. Maybe we'll have to revisit this.